Welcome to D's to your lesson on applications of quadratic equations. Our goal today, I can apply what I know about quadratic equations and functions to solve problems with real world applications. Um, now these are more real world than we, uh, than we have been using, uh, but some of them are still kind of contrived because we can't do uh, total real world applications because that involves physics and, or, or chemistry or stuff like that that we don't know. So we're still going to give you the math and make them work out kind of nicely. So <clears throat> for all application problems, you will read and reread the question carefully. You will decide what you're trying to find and declare your variable. You will set up an equation. You will expand, simplify, and get one side equal to zero as needed. And then you're going to choose one of these methods. You're either going to solve by graphing, by factoring, by completing the square, or by using the quadratic formula. I don't expect too many people to solve by completing the square. Uh, completing the square is not particularly useful. We used it to make the quadratic formula, so I'd expect you to use the quadratic formula. Now, once you're done doing all of that, you need to check to make sure that your answers make sense. Usually there are two mathematic answers, but only one will make, uh, but one of them will make no sense in the context of the question. Uh, such roots are said to be extraneous and are deemed to be inadmissible. And so you need to think about them and check your answers. Which one is the inadmissible answer? Sometimes there's um, both answers are good, uh, but oftentimes one of them is inadmissible. So we're going to go through three examples today. And there are three different types of examples. Uh, example number one is an example where you're given the equation already and you just have to answer some questions about it. Now we've done questions similar to this already in the quadratic functions unit, um, but they involve a quadratic equation. So we're going to take a look at them again. Uh, now the difference between this and what you did with quadratic functions is that now well, I'm not asking you to find a maximum or a minimum value. You will not see the words maximum and minimum in questions that involve using factoring or completing the square or the quadratic formula. Uh, maximum and minimum questions you have to complete the square to solve uh, and these ones are not completing the square to solve. So these are questions. If you are given a formula or equation, it will likely contain two variables. You will also be given the value of one of the variables and you need to sub it in to solve. So we're going to start with the flight of a soccer ball as modeled by the quadratic function. Um, height equals negative 0.025 d squared plus d, where h is the height above ground and d is the horizontal distance from the kicker. How far does the ball go before it hits the ground is our first question. Well, let's think about what we've got here. We have a parabola. Uh, it's a soccer ball. And we want to know where, where D is the horizontal distance. So this is our D. And the height up here is H. Now we want to know how far it goes before it hits the ground. So when it hits the ground is going to be over here. So I need to know what that point is. And to figure out how far it goes, I'm looking for when h is 0. So I need to sub in a 0 for h in my equation. So I'm going to say 0 equals negative 0 0.025 d squared plus d. And we need to solve for d, so I know my horizontal distance. Uh, let's see what this little thing says over here. If the constant term is missing in the quadratic equation, it will always be easiest to solve by removing the common factor or the variable, okay, which is the common factor. So it's going to be easiest to solve by removing the common factor. Let's take a look at removing this common factor. And in fact, I can go one further and I can say I can remove not just the common factor, um, but I can remove this. I can force that out as a common factor as well. So I can say 0 equals negative 0 0.025 d. And when I divide that out of the first term, I get just plain d. And then um, that's going to be a minus. Remember, there's a constant here of 1, so I do 1 divided by that. And that actually gives me 40, so d minus 40. Now, 
I'm not done, I have to solve. So d equals, well, either this first factor is zero or this bracketed factor is zero. If the first factor is zero, that means d is zero. If the second bracketed factor is zero, that means d has to be 40. Now, which one of these are inadmissible? Well, this zero is inadmissible. This stands for where the ball was when it was kicked, um, not how far it went. So this is our answer, and so we would say, therefore, the ball went 40 meters before hitting the ground. Now, let's see what else they are asking us here. <clears throat> it says Bryden heads the ball on its way back down. If Bryden is 1.85 meters tall, how far is he from the kicker? So, I've been given one piece of information here, and that is a height. So, I need to solve that in for h in my equation. So, I get, um, there, and this is my equation, h equals negative 0.025 d squared plus d. And since this is an h, I'm going to sub in 1.85 equals negative 0 0.025 d squared plus d. Now I have to rearrange to get one side equal to 0. I prefer if my a term is positive, so I'm going to get this side equal to 0 since it's negative here. I'm going to add this term to both sides and subtract this term from both sides to get 0 0.025 d squared uh, minus d plus 1.85 equals 0. And this is not factorable, so we need to sub it into the quadratic formula, and I'm just going to do that right now. So here's our answer, 38.1 and 1.9. Now we have to decide which one of these is good and which one is inadmissible. So if I think about what's happened here is the ball's gone up and come down and Bryden has headed the ball. He's at 1.85. So there's two parts where the ball is at 1.85, there and there, if we think of this as being 1.85 meters high. Now when it says Bryden heads the ball on its way back down, that means that it's this one that's the issue. So this must be the 38.1. So this is the good one. This is the one that we say is inadmissible, which I'm just going to put in add down there. So therefore, uh, Bryden is 38.1 meters from the kicker. Carrying on. Our next question. We need a formula, an area formula to solve. So you will be given an expression for dimensions and you'll have to sub into a known formula for area. Most likely this will be a rectangle, which is length times width, or a triangle, which is a half base times height. A rectangle has dimensions x and 2x minus 6. If its area is 92 centimeters squared, what is the value of x and what are the dimensions of the rectangle? What does this here tell us? It says, even if you intend to use the quadratic formula, it always be helpful to remove a common factor before subbing in for a, b, and c. It makes your numbers smaller to work with. Um, so that's a little bit of foreshadowing here. We're probably going to have to factor something out. Uh, let's have a look at how we set this up. So we're going to start by saying, okay, this is a rectangle, so I know area is length times width. And I've been given all of this information. It says it has dimensions x and 2x minus 6. And then our area is 92. So now we need to expand, simplify, and get one side equal to 0. So I got 92 there. This is going to be 2x squared minus 6x. Um, that was from the distributive law. 
And now to get one side equal to 0, the easiest way is to move the 92 over. So 2x squared minus 6x at minus 92. Now the little hint that I pulled out before said that we should always remove a quadratic or common factor even if we intend to use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to take out the 2 and we get x squared minus 3x minus uh, 46. And now I can just ignore this 2 out front. It actually has no bearing on the rest of the question. So if I ignore that 2 out front, now the what I'm going to use in the quadratic formula is a equals 1, b equals negative 3, and c equals negative 46. And I'm just going to do that for you right now. Ta-da! So here we have our two answers. Now we have to figure out which answer is good and which answer is not so good. Now remember what we're trying to find here. These are the dimensions of a rectangle. Uh, in the real world, you cannot have a negative dimension of a rectangle. So this answer is our inadmissible answer, uh, which I'm just going to write as in add. So our x value has to be 8.4. So what does that actually mean? Well, take a look back up. It says the two dimensions of the rectangle were x and 2x minus 6. So x equals 8.4, what we found there. But we also need the other dimension, which is 2x minus 6. So we have to do 2 times 8.4 minus 6. 2 times 8.4 minus 6 gives us 10.8. So therefore, the dimensions are 8.4 by 10.8 and what was the this in centimeters so we need to put our units in our final statement okay last question and this is where we need to use the Pythagorean theorem so you will not be given uh, you will be given information about the sides of a right triangle and you will know it's not an area question because there is nothing to do with area in the question. So for this one it says the hypotenuse of a right triangle is 26. So here we draw our triangle. The hypotenuse of a right triangle is 26. The other two sides have a sum of 35. So we can say let one side be x. Let the other Anytime you have two things that are summing to a number, the other one will always be the sum, which in this case is 35, minus the initial variable. So one side is x, the other side is 35 minus x. So now we have to set this up using Pythagorean theorem. So I'm actually going to say that. I'm going to say using Pythagorean theorem, using Pythagorean theorem, Uh, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in this case, we have x squared plus 35 minus x all squared equals 26 squared. Now we need to expand and simplify this. So I get x squared plus, and if people make a mistake here, it's expanding this 35 minus x squared. Remember, when you square a binomial, there is a middle term. So we're going to expand that out, and when I expand it out, I get 1225, that's 35 squared. Then I have to multiply these two things together and double it, which gives me plus or minus 70x. And then I square the last term, which gives me plus x squared. Now on this side, 26x squared is 676. And now I need to rearrange, collect like terms, get one side equal to zero. So on this side, I have 2x squared. I have this minus 70x. And then when I do 1225 subtract 676, I get plus 549. And that equals zero. Now I can't take a common factor of 2 out this time. Um, this thing doesn't look like it'll factor. If it factors nicely, factor it. But this one doesn't look like it factors. 
Uh, so we're going to plug it into the quadratic formula, and I'm going to do that for you right now. Ta-da! So once again, we have two answers here, and we have to decide which one's inadmissible. Uh, this time, since we're finding dimensions of a right triangle, um, both of these things are okay, because they're both positive. Uh, now, this doesn't mean that all negative answers are inadmissible, but in the case of dimensions, all negative answers are inadmissible. Um, so in this case, we get two values of x. So we've got the case where x is 11.8, or we have the case where x is 23.1. Now, if you actually use the 35 minus x, you'll see that it, if x is 11.8, then, um, then the other side is 23.1. And likewise, down here, if x is 23.1, then this one is 11.8. So we've actually just got two of the same triangle, just different orientations. So we can say, therefore, the other two sides are 23.1 and 11.8. And those do add up to 35, although we may have a rounding error right there. But, um, but that concludes that uh, example. And that concludes your, your lesson for today.